I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, there's one adjustment. Uh, adjournment will become 12.0. And in its place at 11.0 is motion to adjourn to executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 4056D to discuss the maintenance contract not to return to public session. Thank you. 5.0, superintendent's report. Um, I have uh, just a few things. I, I think that. Um, in terms of uh, the, the time of year that it is, uh, looking out at my friends uh, who work in the schools, um, it's a very busy time. It's fun and exciting, um, but there's only so much fun and excitement that we can stand um, <laughs> all, at, all at one time. So uh, people are, are, are getting a little tired, um, but uh, they have good spirits, and, uh, and certainly the students are doing a good, a good job sort of staying focused and, um, and keeping up their part of the bargain. But uh, the end of year is a busy, busy time. It's moving as it should be, smoothly, and, uh, and with much activity and energy. Um, I would just uh, direct your attention to the, the uh, screens up around you. And um, this are, is, a, uh, I think, a new tradition. I do think it's a new tradition. I was wondering if it was going to be. Um, I see heads nodding. Um, uh, today, uh, we celebrated the, the first, um, some are calling it the senior send-off, some are calling it um, the congratulatory stroll, um, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, it was a great uh, dress uh, rehearsal for our graduates, our seniors. Uh, they got all decked out in their caps and gowns and the entire school communities of the middle school and the Wentworth School and parents and others in the stands, um, the kids and staff lined the inner and outer circles of the, um, of the track, uh, the perimeters, and uh, with much enthusiasm and excitement and big smiles um, and hugs, I saw a lot of hugs, um, basically congratulated our seniors as they took one stroll around the entire track um, and interacted basically uh, with all of the folks that were there to wish them well. It was really, um, I understand that in the stands where the parents were, there were not dry eyes. Um, so, so it had, it, it, and for those of us who were out on the field, it was a very, very touching and a very special time. Um, so these were um, some photos that I took and um, I was pleased to uh, capture some Wentworth students who had um, uh, prepared for th this uh, new tradition by creating congratulatory um, uh, uh, signs for the for the seniors. Uh, one, you know, many of them said, "Congratulations, job well done," um, and one of them said, "No more high school." <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think that what you see here uh, are really the interaction um, of our seniors. Uh, with their um, underclassmen here in, uh, in Scarborough. And uh, there were lots of uh, high fives. Um, the, the thing that I noticed most was all of the smiles. So it was a really nice little time out, didn't take a lot of time, didn't take a lot of effort. It was a gorgeous day uh, to be outside for about, I think it, I, David, you told me it lasted about 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Um, so that was from sort of start to end and uh, it was just a sort of a, a really um, a very special time for all of us uh, who were there. So I wanted to share that with you. And the music was excellent as well. And the music was excellent as well. Who was responsible, Mr. David? Thurlow. Mr. Thurlow. Good nice job with thank the music. Done. Yes, very good. Thank you, Mr. Thurlow. All those, all those parents were like, ah, just from that's the music. What, so. That's what made people cry, Mr. Thurlow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't help but to mention the upcoming vote on June 14th. Um, we are uh, excited <coughs> about that date coming and going and having a budget after that date. So I'm hoping that um, we are uh, getting the message out there 
and that that message is being heard, that it's a very important time. It's the primary election, but it is um, important for the schools in that it, it is the budget uh, validation referendum, uh, which basically, um, when passed, uh, passes the school budget, and that's what we're looking for. Um, and last, but certainly not least, I know that um, Mrs. Sizemore has a little bit of a PEPG update for the, um, for the board. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. So good news, we did submit our uh, PEPG uh, report to the state and um, we're looking forward uh, to having it approved by the state and uh, getting back into work with it. So you, as you know, the last four years we have been working with the Teachers Association, a group of teachers, administrators, school board member, a parent, and uh, developing our uh, teacher evaluation system, which under the state is called Performance Evaluation and Professional Growth Model. Um, we uh, very much looked at uh, different research and decided on the Marzano model, which really ties in very well with our activities at the school in regards to our professional um, uh, learning teams. And um, with that, we focused, our focus has been on professional growth. How can teachers get better at the craft that they're doing? And so that has been our um, major focus with the uh, evaluation system and a, and a pretty big change. We piloted it two years ago with a small group of people um, and um, we were successful. We're learning um, how to maneuver with eye observation and get in and learn the system. And this past year we had uh, the whole staff who was involved in uh, the Marzano model and looking at eye observation, developing uh, a self-assessment which went into a growth plan and from the growth plan they identified what their target elements were and our school leaders also use the system to go in for evaluation and have discussions. One of the, uh, the best uh, feedback we received from teachers is that when someone goes in and does an observation, they have immediate feedback from uh, the administrator because you can just hit the button and it sends the evaluation to them. Where in the past, we would wait two, three weeks sometimes before we would have a discussion or the teacher would get that feedback. So that's been a, a real positive. Our, we're going to continue with using um, Marzano and uh, eye observation. And next year, um, we've already started to plan. And some of the target elements will be used with professional learning teams. Um, also with uh, the PEPG model, uh, we had to provide training for the evaluator and for um, uh, the teachers. And so we have done that over the course of two years. Um, we have had um, the training with learning sciences on interrelated reliability, looking at protocols, feedback, and scoring. And I have to say, we probably have a good uh, 100 people who have been trained in the system now. One of the best things is that we have um, worked with other districts to provide this training, so we shared the cost of providing this, this training at um, a much reduced rate than what it would have cost just for Scarborough to do that. And that's why I think we have close to 100 people who are now uh, been trained. So we're, we developed a three-year cycle for um, the evaluation process. Uh, years one and two, uh, teachers do that self-assessment. They have their growth plan. They look at the targeted elements. Um, they are observed by peers during the first two years. They collect their artifacts, and then in the third year is when the school leader will come in and do observations. People can do observations at any time, but the third year is their formal summative evaluation. And at that time, teachers will um, show and demonstrate their professional growth through the artifacts and through the work that they have done with their professional learning teams. Um, we have probationary teachers included in that and um, so we're looking forward to hearing back from the state um, we've included all the things that we needed to include in the uh, report such as uh, looking at multiple measures for how you would do an evaluation um, we have the rating scales that needed to be done also and uh, sources of, of evidence for teachers so we're hoping for a positive report, and um, we'll be back in touch with you. But I think it has been, um, you, you can't learn a system unless you do it. 
And so um, there's a small group of us who have been practicing on fake accounts, but it's the real, it's when you really go in and start using it that you learn more about it and if there is a little glitch that you, you learn how to fix it and, <coughs> and uh, work with the company to make it successful. So I think we've had a very successful year with it. Could you just say something too? What, one of the things that really impressed me was that there is a, uh, a sort of appropriately modified plan for professional staff as well. Yes, there, um, we have, there's two systems. One is for classroom teachers and the uh, another system which has a, their its own learning map is for non-classroom instructional. So if you have guidance, social workers, OT, PT, psych examiners, they have their own modules that they can work on to obtain their professional growth. Thank you. Very good. Great. Joanne, just a comment. I think <coughs> one of the, one of the things that is also impressive um, that I find is the response that we get back from the teachers mm -hmm. because. And, and there's a communication set up as soon as, as soon as we hit finish, it goes to the teacher, there's a, a message there, and then um, what has been so encouraging has been the feedback from the teachers in terms of um, how helpful they find the feedback. Uh, it's very targeted, it's very specific. Um, we can look on the map and we can look exa at exactly what that every single teacher is, um, is targeting in terms of their growth. So before any of us walk into a classroom, we've got that up in front of us, and we're, we're prepared to, to basically look for those things and give uh, feedback to the teachers. And um, I, I know the response has been really positive. Yep. Very good, anything else? Well, and, and I just wanna say, this is the culmination of years of work on the part of our staff and our leaders, um, but truly, um, Joanne Sizemore has been an incredible leader in this aspect of our work in the district. I followed this work for a couple of years and uh, sat in those meetings. There's no way to explain to just a lay person the depth and the importance of this work. And so um, I, I'm really hopeful that out of it will come a yes from the state yeah. and not uh, go back and fix it because we've worked on you've, how many four years four Three years four years four years of work it's it, it represents a lot of work and and it is an incredible uh, undertaking that you have led and I appreciate that tremendously well thank you but I also had a very strong team with me because one person can't do it all without your great team that you have with right. you. Yes, so. yeah, and, and terrific um, staff members who just came forward yeah. at, um, you know, after school, many hours after school. So this is unpaid time for the work that they do, so and, thank you. And if um, Augusta has a problem, we may be yeah. taking a little bus ride up there. So <laughs> <it's> <laughs> Good idea, I'll go with you. <laughs> 6.0 is the chair's report. I just have one thing to report, and that is that last evening was the baccalaureate. Um, this is an event that hosts all our seniors, all the senior uh, graduating class throughout the town, regardless of what uh, school you attend. And many of our Scarborough High School students attend this event, as did several of us from the school board. It was, it was really touching once again. It's just a lovely, lovely uh, experience for them to go through and for the parents because again not a dry eye in the room when especially when they show the baby pictures and then <laughs> the the graduation pictures so it's it was very very nice and well attended 7.0 would be the committee reports um becky before i give my committee report i would say that uh, I attended the awards assembly on Wednesday evening. Uh, every day there's been something, but once again, it was uh, absolutely incredible the amount of recognition our students receive from the town and from organizations in the town and the amount of money raised on their behalf to support the scholarship program and how wonderful our students look, all dressed up and spiffy and shaved. And <laughs> <laughs> that too was a very nice event and, and the administration at the high school does an excellent job of keeping that moving. Uh, the only 
committee report I have at the moment is, uh, I have two actually, and the Maine School Boards Association met uh, at the, uh, two weeks ago I think, and the uh, Constitution and bylaws are, are being revised and uh, we thought we might have them ready for the October meeting this fall, but I don't think that's going to happen. And secondly, the uh, negotiations group is meeting with the uh, maintenance staff. We had a meeting with them today, and uh, there are only three members of that group. So it's very easy, they're very accommodating. We're meeting with them next week and hope to have everything finalized. That would be nice if the teachers could do the same thing. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Sure. Um, communications committee has uh, been working hard on our next newsletter, which should be coming out in the next 24 hours. So if anyone's not subscribed, <laughs> get in there and subscribe. Um, and we've also been working on Facebook. We've been putting out weekly um, kind of stories taken right from the budget about the successes and accomplishments of the, each school, as well as investments being requested and just trying to keep reminding people of what they're voting for, how what they have voted for in previous years has been used. Um, so hopefully keeping that in the forefront of everybody's mind to get out and vote. Thank um, you, Christine. Long range facilities plan um, has a date tomorrow, tomorrow mm -hmm. to meet with uh, Dan Cecil to review the information that he had originally presented to us back, I believe it was last January, January? a year ago anyway, January yeah. not this right. past right. few months yeah. ago um, January so he has um, hopefully put together um, all the information from the planning decisions that we did with regard to trends and uh, student counts and we hope that he has some new information for us put together and I'll be bringing that forward hopefully in a couple of meetings so that's it for very us. good Kate, I'm going to ask you to speak on policy right now because Mrs. Murphy wasn't able to be there. So, sure. Want to just update? Yeah. Sure. We uh, we are gathering some information regarding <coughs> medical marijuana, and so that will be one of the first items that we address at the start of next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've also the lion's share of our attention right now has been dealing with a new transgender policy, which will be up for a vote uh, later in the meeting. One okay. other thing I will say about policy. Um, Thanks for still meeting, even though I was out on my medical leave still. But um, we are scheduled this summer to take a look um, with Mr. Legage at the um, booster policy to um, streamline some things and make um, some potential changes. So that's also on the horizon coming up for policy. Do you have a date for that? It would be, I, I, once, okay. I think we're going to wait for school yep. to get over. <laughs> Okay. Give, give everyone a Good. chance to take a breath. Take a break. So, yeah. all right. Plan for July. <laughs> finance. So finance hasn't met since our last board meeting. Mm -hmm. Starting right. to have withdrawals. <laughs> um, but so we're scheduled to meet in July, July seventh, and we'll probably <laughs> touch base and reschedule that maybe before the holiday, just because it's been so long since we met. Um, I guess our primary focus, which seems very obvious and people are tired of me talking about it, is um, the vote, which is June 14th at the high school um, because it is a primary. So it will be at the high school from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but early voting is going on now here at Town Hall. You can always swing in and, and cast your vote. Um, all of the budget information that you could ever possibly want to know is on the town website. If you just click on the button that says budget, it will take you there and you'll learn lots of interesting and fun facts. Um, but before I end, I just wanted to thank um, George and the high school staff for putting together that walk today. I loved it, as you know. Um, Mr. Creech runs a very tight ship. They were right out at 9.15. It was not 9.16. It was not 9.14. It was 10 um, minutes around the track. Once the seniors came out to when they went back in, it was 10 minutes. Yeah, it was, it was really great. And, and I think the feedback that we've been receiving today has been awesome. phenomenal. Um, my Facebook page 
You have a Facebook been, page? You have a Facebook has been, page? Has been, what? Has been viewed more than 3,200 times. Viral. This, wow. this yeah. is You've viral. gone viral. Yeah. <laughs> and and Miss Catch also has a bit to do with the um, punctuality of the students. Oh, so you probably oh, could have done that okay. live. It was noted. Could have yeah, done you could have live video. From that. Oh. What's that? You could have done a live feed today <laughs> from the... Oh. Oh. We struggle oh, just wow. doing the Facebook thing. We need a new... Can I go in the tech? It would have been on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. well, all right. Next year. Wow. Next year. All right. Exposing him. Everyone charged of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Thanks. It was fun. Jody, was that, uh, was, whose idea was that? Mary Starr um, posted onto my Facebook page probably, I don't know, three like weeks a, ago, yeah. I think, yeah. or maybe a month ago. And I, I loved it yeah. the instant I saw it and then just harassed George and David. Well, thank you, Mary Starr, for, for yeah. that idea. Fantastic. Well, we, we took a, a little great. twist on on the original idea. Yeah, because yeah. that in that place, I think it was in Texas. They went the the high school kids went to each of the schools and walked through the hallways of their old school. So this, you know, was okay. One one place, all the, you know, a lot of the kids. Yeah. So it was good. Very good. Anything else? 8.0 is our student representative reports, and they are not here this evening. I'm sure they're very, very, very busy. So 9.0, the fun part, the recognition of our retirees. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Where do we begin? You want to do? Well, we, we do have um, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Creech is doing an introduction. Okay. Um, Barbara is doing an introduction. Kelly as well, and um, Allison for school staff. Do I have that right? <coughs> yes. Oh, okay. Oh, that's for continuing. Okay. okay. Sorry. All right. So that's Allison. All right. And so David, Kelly, Barbara, and Barbara. Yeah. There we go. David, do you want to begin? Sure. Thank you. So with your permission, I'd like to talk a little bit about today's event. Do I have permission? Yes. Proceed. Good. <laughs> so harassment, I think, is the word when it comes to the emails I received from you, but I'm not oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Good harassment, though, just is the best kind. Just a little nudge. Kind. So <laughs> just uh, for the first thing that I wanted to do was, uh, on behalf of the high school, to really thank George, uh, Barbara Halfborn, David Courier, uh, Kelly Crosby, and John Thurlow, who have been completely supportive of this from the very beginning and everybody got together to plan this and it was an absolute fantastic day. Um, for those of you kind of interested in, in, in what we were trying to accomplish, originally we had student council members come to me and say, we wanna do something special for the seniors because the school doesn't get a chance to celebrate them, they just kind of leave. If you can't go to graduation, students and staff at the high school don't get a chance. So they wanted to have a senior send off assembly where the seniors all marched in. We had a 30 minute program and we did some various things. We brought the eighth graders up and transitioned them to the high school. But we couldn't pull it off with everything that was happening in such a short amount of time. And what we were gonna do is have that assembly and then have the students march out the back of the high school like they did today and be greeted by the Wentworth and middle school students down around the track. So we'll probably do that next year. And what we're gonna try to do next year is have it K through eight. Um, and it was a fantastic event. And in terms of kudos, Mr. Applestein and Ms. Ketch work with the marching practice and they're the ones that are disciplining our seniors and putting them on time and everything. And they do a fantastic job. So I wanna make sure they were recognized for their hard work. But just wanted to thank everybody for making today a great day. And it was fantastic and it's a tradition we hope to continue for a long time. Thank you for letting me share that. Um, Sue and I are up here to recognize um, an absolutely fabulous teacher that has been working at Scarborough High School for 36 years, started in 1980. Um, I'm not gonna ask her to stand up during all this because I have a lot to say. <laughs> Even though I owe her for the things that she says during my faculty meetings, but I'm not gonna do that today. <laughs> uh, my transitions in faculty meetings, as you know, are the most important part, and if it wasn't for Eileen Matrazo, there would be nothing fun in my, fa in my faculty <laughs> meetings. So she is a... a <laughs> wonderful, uh, has a wonderful sense of humor. 
So Eileen has been at Scarborough High School since 1980. 36 years she's been an English teacher. To put this in perspective, she has impacted positively over 3,500 students in this community. Among those students, there are no fewer than 12 pupils who have gone on to teach in Scarborough, including Mr. John Thurlow, who works, Ms. Denise Blaine and Aaron Bouchard, who are English teachers at the high school. Our current school board uh, member, Kelly Murphy, was a student of Eileen's three, three, years. three consecutive three years in high yes. school. And I want to note that uh, wasn't repeating three years no. of English. <laughs> It was 10th, 11th, and 12th, and I feel like there should be a plaque outside the classroom. I'm just saying. I think I have I, the record. I wasn't going to throw you under the bus. I wanted to make sure they knew it was, yes, thank you, you know, three years not repeating Eileen's class three times. <laughs> At least that's what my notes say. Um, she has taught with and worked under um, 11 different high school principals and seven superintendents during her tenure at Scarborough High School. So she's had a wonderful career. She's been involved in students' lives in and out of the classroom. Um, she has chaperoned, I think, at least three Europe trips, uh, including one to Italy, correct? Uh, two. two. Two to Italy. Um, and she's just been supportive and, and a, a wonderful educator in and out of the classroom. Um, some memorable moments that I'd like to share that have been shared by colleagues um, include when a student's mother announced to her that Eileen's son was the first boy she ever kissed. <laughs> and I'm still trying to figure out the dynamics of that, but it's, <laughs> it sounds funny no matter how you figure that out. <laughs> and when Eileen was asked why she was retiring, she said, I'm leaving now before somebody says, you had my grandmother as a student. <laughs> Um, Eileen has a fantastic sense of humor. We absolutely love her. Um, uh, it's really hard to say goodbye to her, but um, we're so thankful for her service to us, and we're so happy for her to next stage in her life. And I, Ms. Ketch has worked for her, with her, for over three decades, so we thought it'd be appropriate if Sue had a chance to come up and share some moments as well. Eileen, will you please come up too? We'd like to see you stand over by the podium. So one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I'm going to miss Eileen is Eileen is one of the few people left at the high school that can swear to children that once upon a time I was a brunette. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I will miss doing many events with Eileen. Um, we've sat at I don't know how many games or musicals or um, different performances at the high school. Um, Eileen is always great fun to be with. I don't think you ever see Eileen without a smile, and we will miss you. <laughs> um, so I, we have some memories from some of your colleagues. Um, let's see. When I was a brand new teacher and starting my first staff day at school, she gave me and the other new English teachers a book called Today I Made a Difference. This gesture has always stuck with me and I have always appreciated her welcoming, supporting presence in our department. And that's from Lauren. As a new teacher this year, I immediately noticed Eileen's verve and elan at English department meetings. They're also at faculty meetings. She certainly functioned as the senior senator of our group, and I am indebted to her for her wisdom, her grace, her dignity, and her caring. And that's from Rich. Eileen was my sophomore and junior year English teacher at SHS 23 years ago. Since then, she has become much more than that. She is a colleague, a mentor, a confidant, and a friend. Her humor and quick wit make her one of the most entertaining and spunky women I know. She always has a tale to tell that is guaranteed to put a smile on your face. I will miss Eileen dearly. Scarborough High School was very fortunate to have such a caring, passionate, and dedicated teacher. And that's from Erin. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. The best teachers are great because they are born with a gift for connecting with people and changing how they think for enlightening them to new and different perspectives. Eileen taught me this, and she is one of those who was born to teach. 
She is one of the greats. Eileen has been a caring, thoughtful, and funny mentor, colleague, and friend for all the 16 years of my career here at Scarborough High School. I'm going to miss her a great deal, especially because she always knows how to make you smile no matter how rough your day has been. Congratulations. that David Ortiz decided to retire this year <laughs> and he's having really a great year and so I thought that was kind of a clue for me to do the same. As the face of the middle school for 19 years, Elizabeth Johnson sat at the front desk greeting students, answering phone calls, helping parents, maintaining attendance data, helping staff, answering their questions, assisting with main office tasks, putting band-aids on students, and the list goes on and on. Right, Elizabeth? On and on. <laughs> Many of these tasks occurred simultaneously. Elizabeth was required to multitask, and multitask she did all day long. Elizabeth also worked for a number of summers in the extended school year program with special education students. I always enjoyed watching her with the students. I would go down the hall and check in and see how the kids were doing, and there was Elizabeth. Her eyes were always lit. She loved to laugh, and it's a loud laugh. <laughs> it's a great laugh, um, and she loved to laugh with the students with whom she worked. It was clear to all that Elizabeth enjoyed her role as receptionist. She enjoyed the activity and the constant buzzing of a busy middle school. She did a wonderful job learning new skills and adapting to the changes which occurred regularly, yearly, in the main office. However, it was evident that what she enjoyed the most was her time spent with the students. <laughs> students loved Ms. Johnson, and she loved them. They were always hanging out at her desk, even then when they were supposed to be in the classroom. <laughs> she took extra time to make connections with them, find out what they enjoyed doing outside of school. She made students feel special. Elizabeth took special care to connect with the most severely disabled students in school, making them feel included and important. These students, as well as many others, came to see her every single day. Elizabeth always took time out of her busy schedule to speak with the students. It was clear that students enjoyed this time with her. Every Christmas break, and at the end of each year, we were quite jealous because Ms. Johnson had to make many trips to her car with all the goodies and flowers that students and their parents gave to her. They appreciated her efforts. Elizabeth, thank you for your 19 years of service. We appreciate your efforts and your hard work. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, ma'am. You've been oh, great. Thanks. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you all. Don't have Thank to tell her who I am. No. <laughs> <laughs> have a great retirement. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you for being nice to my kids. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Wentworth School has two retirees this year. The first is Mrs. Joyce Anderson. Joyce Anderson has served Scarborough Public Schools since 1995. Following 15 years of work in the private sector and following raising her two beautiful girls, Mrs. Anderson began working as a substitute in the main offices of the K-2 schools, Bestworth, Wentworth Intermediate Schools, the K-5 Principal's Office, and the School Department's Central Office. In 1997, she began full-time employment as an EdTech 1 at Wentworth Intermediate School. Her primary responsibility at the time was purchasing and inventory control. Since 2008, Joyce has been the guidance secretary at Wentworth School, a role that she really helped to develop. Major responsibilities of the guidance secretary include overseeing the registration process for new students, overseeing record systems, report card and district-wide testing administrative responsibilities, creating and maintaining guidance files, student placement, one of her very favorite tasks, <laughs> monthly reports, and power school data entry. Though the list of her job requirements is quite impressive, these responsibilities are just part of what Joyce Anderson has contributed to our school community. She is a gem. She relishes the opportunity to share stories of pride about her girls and her husband Andy and even her old dog Fergus. She is a loyal friend and a lunch companion to our front office staff, especially her Elsie. We will miss hearing how, about how this time she is not going to go overboard on gifts for Michelle and Lindsay at the holidays, year after year after year. She always does. And this time, she is really going to stick to her nutrition routine. <laughs> In all seriousness, we will miss Joyce's kindness, generosity, positive attitude, and most, most, most especially, her belly laugh. So genuine and infectious that even the most stressed out person in the room has to stop and smile. All of our best for a very happy retirement, Joyce. You will be missed. The next retiree that we are honoring this evening, I believe is the record holder of the room, Mrs. Susan Hickey, with a remarkable 38 years of service, all in Scarborough Public Schools. Most of it in Woodworth. <laughs> so for 38 years, all in Scarborough Public Schools, she has her master's degree from the University of Southern Maine and has taught entirely at the intermediate level. From 1978 to 2016, she taught at Bessie School. Um, she taught at Benjamin F. Wentworth Intermediate School and has most recently enjoyed the opportunities of the new Wentworth School. She's come online so fast. You should see her using that Eno board. <laughs> Sue comes from a beloved and very close-knit family of educators. We met all of them at a re recent retirement party for her. Nieces, nephews, the whole crew was there to celebrate Sue. In her retirement, she is looking forward to travel, learning to cook, and good food, hopefully all in that order, with her adoring family. Sue has been described by her colleagues as someone who radiates joy, and it's true. She's positive, She's happy, and colleagues delight in her quick wit at very unexpected times. It comes out of nowhere, and it's amazing. 
We've heard many stories and anecdotes at a recent celebration from over the years, and I now feel I know Sue on a whole new level. Um, we've also had the pleasure of a slideshow of Sue through the years, and the only thing that ever really changed were the style of her glasses. <laughs> <laughs> that same beautiful smile has not changed one bit since 1978. Above all, Miss Hickey cares deeply for her students. In this, her final year, Sue Hickey volunteered to pioneer a brand new reading curriculum. Uh, the learning has never, ever stopped. Wentworth School will miss this accomplished teacher, her wealth of history and knowledge, and her expansive decorative holiday pins collection, a different one for every day of December. We wish Sue Hickey a retirement as absolutely joyous as she is. And last but not least, our superintendent, George N. Twistle. Dr. N. Twistle, George, has been our superintendent for the past five years. He came to Scarborough at a time when we, and the state, and the country, were starting to emerge out of the worst recession since the Great Depression. The economy was extremely fragile, and financial resources were tight. As a result, the school system was retrenching <coughs> due to these financial circumstances. George was selected to lead our school system out of this difficult situation. However, his first task was to right the ship, so to speak, in terms of pointing the direction for the staff and the district towards professional and student growth, engage the community, create, create budgets that would reflect the need for incremental improvements over time for the positions and the programs that were lost due to the financial retrenchment, all while being fiscally responsible to the citizens of Scarborough. So what has changed in these last five years? Dr. Rentwistle has brought exceptional leadership to the school district and community. Our educators are engaged in meaningful research-based professional development opportunities designed to improve student growth. They have joined with each other in professional learning communities. They study data implement new ideas in their classrooms, and share their new knowledge and findings among themselves and the public in an exposition held at the end of each school year. Our district now has a commitment to technology integration K-12. We have a new school building, Wentworth, with highly qualified administrators and teachers who have incredible amounts of data to support what our district needs. George is data-minded. He loves graphs. And <laughs> <laughs> he has engaged our residents in forums that have led to agreed-upon beliefs and provided short and long-term goal for Scarborough's public school system. He established a business school partnership he encouraged the development of the Scarborough Education Foundation. His most recent and personally rewarding endeavor has been to engage the school district in a partnership with UNIBE in the Dominican. Through this, we have an exchange program with student teachers from the university in the Dominican in conjunction with USM to expose our K-2 students to the Spanish culture and language. To say the least, the changes have been remarkable under your leadership, George, 
And better still is our promise of c continued growth as we move forward in our district. I've had the pr privilege of getting to know George a little better as the chair of the, for the last two years. One of the best things for me has been to see the depth of the commitment to the students and staff. But I've also enjoyed the stability, the calm demeanor, and the culture you created among the leadership and the office staff in particular. So you have many adventures ahead. First, we thought it was all about the excitement, your plans to work in Shanghai. So we were thrilled for you. Sad for us, but now we learn that in a few weeks, you're going to become a father-in-law. Mm -hmm. And a few months later, you're going to be a grandfather. That's right. And now we learn your second son is engaged to be married. Yes. <laughs> How does anyone get so lucky all at once? <laughs> Congratulations, George, and thank you. And now we have a few other school board members who would like to say a few words. Jackie, do you want to start? I would. I was, I was on the board when George was hired, and I'm very proud of that. It, uh, he came on at a time when we were just on the verge of so much. We, we had the uh, faculty and an administration who were right there and who were ready to step forward. And he has provided that leadership. And they would go to H and back for him, and I know that. And you should know that as well. So I, I am most thankful for the fact that we have a faculty who is going to miss this man more than any other superintendent I've worked with. We have a man who loves children and is going to have the opportunity to love a baby who's going to call him Grandpa. <laughs> George, actually. <laughs> I am, I am for his service. I, I wish him well in his endeavors. And Nancy, if, if you would come forward, I have a gift for both of you. We had a new superintendent, as you know, who has a little child, and I gave her a book. So you're going to have a little child, and I would like to do the same. That's so nice. I would just like to say um, I was, I, I'm not sure the proper term, co coerced perhaps. Um, I was asked to um, visit the superintendent's office one day when I had stopped in the clerk's office. And I said, gee, I wonder what he would like. And I went upstairs and he sat down and he said, I really think that we need you to run for the Board of Education because I think it would be a good thing for you to do. And I thought, oh, let me go home. And I've, I've known um, George for many years in a previous position that George held. My husband worked for the company, so we have known each other, and you've seen my children grow up and things, and I've seen your children as well. Um, but it was very funny when I sat down in your office and you sort of said, I think you need to do this. Go home and talk to Johnny about that. And I thought, oh, and I nicely went home, and I said, John, I, I was, I, Dr. Entwistle is now down at the Scarborough Schools, and what do you think if I were to run for the Board of Education? He says, well, if that's what you want to do, you know, go ahead. I think that's good. So here I am, and I'd like to thank you for asking me or suggesting to me very um, push, 
pushing me um, <laughs> to do Getting that. I have, sensitive but I, pushy way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've really enjoyed working with you. Um, I, I wish you and Nancy well um, with the kids, with your trip on to China. I, I know it will just be an amazing adventure and one that started out, as Donna pointed out, um, that you really had no kind of responsibilities. The kids were on their own, they're doing really well, and you thought you and Nancy would get some time to travel and enjoy that, and now suddenly it's one thing after the other. So you're, you're gonna have a wonderful time doing that. I really wish you well. Thank you for everything you did for Scarborough and for me as well. Um, this has been a wonderful experience for me, so best of luck. Thank you. Kelly? Um, I, I got to the table shortly after you did. You hired in July and I came in November too. Just, I just really want to say job well done. You were the perfect person at the right time for Scarborough. I mean, obviously I've been here a long time, right? We just went over that. Um, so I, I've worked through some superintendents and I know some people in this town in education, but you really just took Scarborough to another level and it was um, impressive, especially in the economic time which you showed up so sorry for you that it was so rough but we hope you enjoyed your time here and we will absolutely miss you Jody I was thinking back on when I first met George and it was August right after he started I received a letter from the superintendent and I thought oh, what did I do wrong All right. <laughs> only been a month. Um, so I came up and, and met with George on um, just the state of the town. He was talking with many people around town. Um, and from that discussion came um, a small group of us creating the Education Foundation. Um, and so thank you for that. I, I loved that opportunity. Um, I think our town has been, benefited from it. And um, it's, it's been a wild ride ever since. Here I am now. Um, I guess I have you to blame. Is that what I should say? Right? <laughs> Maybe. Um, but I do. I wish you luck, and um, I'm sure you'll have many adventures, especially when Kelly and I come over to visit. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> That's happening, so get ready. <laughs> Kate? I, I regret that I have not known you as long as some of the people on the board. Uh, in the, the short time that I've known you, it's just been utterly remarkable. I first met George when I was considering running for the school board, and uh, I, you, ever since that moment, you've been such a mentor to me in every possible way, and I am so appreciative. I'm so appreciative of what you've done for the town. I appreciate your compassion and your humor and your humility and your willingness to take a stand, even on important things like um, trash strikes. I think that is probably one of the most <laughs> <laughs> I also have had the great luxury of sitting next to you during the meetings, and uh, uh, I think of myself as someone who, who knows words, but um, in the, the dozens of meetings that I've sat next to George, I've always asked him how he's doing, and he's never answered in the same way. He's had, a, he's had more synonyms than, than I know, and my very favorite is peachy. So uh, <laughs> working with you has been peachy, and, and I wish you all the best. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> keeping you there. Um, I, just like Kate, I'm sorry that I haven't been able to uh, work with you on the board as long as everyone else has. Um, but even in the short time that I've been on the board, it's been really clear to me the effect that you've had on this organization. It's clear that you've put students first in every decision that's been made. You've gone to bat for your teachers and staff in creating and protecting de professional development time. You've helped Scarborough Schools do some deep thinking about who we are as a school department, mm -hmm. where we want to go, and how we're going to get there. And you've really laid a beautiful framework for any and all of the good work that I know that is coming down the road for Scarborough Schools. So thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.
I was going to take it at the end of the continuing contract. Do you want me to take it now? No, no, take it there. I know. I can't sit together. And so ends the recognition ceremony. 10.0, new business. 10.1, appointments. 10.11. Second year probationary. Yeah, I, I think it's um, I think it's just important. Uh, we will go through second year probationary professionals, third year pro um, probationary professionals, and I'll read the names. There's a number of them, and I'll try to I'll try to be um, quick about it. Um, and then we also have our first year continuing contract professionals that we'll recognize here tonight. Um, I, I think that um, years ago this was a rather an automatic thing that happened. Uh, that there was an advancement through the probationary period um, and not much a, a, a big to-do was made of it. Um, we've made a big to-do of it because it is indeed a big to-do for these teachers. Uh, they are um, seen by many eyes um, as soon as they enter the district, um, including the superintendents. I've seen all of these uh, folks at each of these levels. Um, and more recently, um, with the eye observation, they have been seen by peers and, and others. So it's, it's a real, it's, it's truly a rite of passage and it's something to be celebrated. Um, they're extraordinary teachers, these folks that are moving on to continuing contract and we're really very proud of them and you'll hear a little bit about them. Um, the second year pro uh, probationary professionals are as follows. Um, at Wentworth, STEM teacher, Sarah Aher Athern. Um, middle school, Gates math teacher, Carrie Ellen Avery. Language arts teacher at the high school, Carrie Becker. Science and social studies teacher at the middle school, Brianna Bullard. At Eight Corners, our music teacher, Erin Burns. Middle school has William Cabana, who's a social studies teacher. Sarah Can Canaris. Conieris, Conieris, um, at Eight Corners, thank you, Anne, um, is a classroom teacher at Eight <coughs> Corners. Elizabeth Fan, at Middle School, uh, she's a science teacher. Catherine Fisher, Wentworth, teacher. William Griziano, at the high school, is our psych examiner. Aaron Huth, is at the high school as well, science teacher. Sarah Janosik, pl at Pleasant Hill, classroom teacher. Albert McCormick, high school, science teacher. Gail Neal, high, high school, math teacher. Mary Beth Nolt, language arts teacher, again at the high school. Amy Ranko, high school social worker. Ann Reiner, high school language arts teacher. Danielle Roy Becker, um, also at Eight Corners. Uh, she's a teacher there. Um, Richard Selinger, Wentworth classroom teacher. Diane Stoltz, Wentworth teacher and Richard Wesley, high school language arts teacher. And my recommendation is to ap approve uh, these nominations and movement um, to the second year probationary teacher. So moved. Second. All in favor? Seven. Thank you. Uh, these are our third year teachers. They finished their second year and they're moving into their third year of probation. Again, at the middle school, Nancy Bannon, nurse, Steve Bisob, Middle School Music, Jacob Brown, Middle School Social Studies, Christine De Rosa at uh, the high school and she teaches math, Katrina Edwards at, uh, is a special education teacher at Wentworth, Sarah uh, Guglielmo um, at Eight Corners, did I say that right? Guglielmo. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sarah Guglielmo at Eight Corners uh, classroom teacher, Christopher Hayward at the high school teaches math. Anne Marie Henderson, Eight Corners, uh, she's an inst a literacy instructional coach. At Eight Corners, Ashley uh, Cadlick, a classroom teacher. High school has uh, Brianna Kelman, who is a Spanish teacher. Wentworth has Gail Labonte, who is a, who is a grade five teacher. Wentworth also has uh, Melissa Maddock. Uh, there's Michelle McPherson at Wentworth, who's a classroom teacher. Uh, uh, Justo Perez Estevez, who is our Spanish teacher at the middle school. Um, uh, Petria Plummer at the at Wentworth Special Education. Rachel Powers Middle School Special Education. Julianne Smith Wentworth Guidance Counselor. Kelly Tukey Wentworth Grade Five Teacher. 
Karen Walker, also at Wentworth, literacy instructional coach, Jessica Winchester, middle school special education, Jennifer Wood at the high school, um, and she teaches math, and Chaley Zinchuk at the uh, Wentworth School uh, grade five teacher. My recommendation is that all of these candidates uh, be moved into their third year probationary period. So moved. Second. All in favor? Seven. Thank you. And we have um, some uh, recognition for our con uh, continuing contract teachers and professionals. And we'll probably start with special education. Allison. <coughs> Uh, first, I'd like to recognize uh, Jim Schoonover. He is a high school resource room teacher with us. Jim's in the back. Could there. you just stand for us? You don't a minute, so. <laughs> There we go. There's Jim. Jim received his master's degree in American and New England studies at the University of Southern Maine. He brings over 30 years of special education experience with him, most of that in South Portland, <coughs> uh, K through 12. Uh, he um, has worked in a resource room setting, a self-contained setting, a behavior uh, program, also a mainstream team teaching. Uh, so he's done really every model possible within special education. Um, what um, stands out to me that we have really benefited from Jim is the care that he gives um, the high school students in developing their post-secondary uh, transition goals and plan, what they're going to do when they get out of high school. Um, the, uh, the care that he puts into those plans is just such a benefit for all of us. So really welcome Jim staying with us. Glad we got him from South Portland. <laughs> Lisa Larrabee is a special education teacher at the Blue Point School, and she's here with, with her two daughters and husband, so welcome. Uh, Lisa uh, received her master's degree in education from Russell, Russell Sage Graduate School in New York. She has over 15 years experience in, uh, as a special education teacher and as a speech therapist from preschool through grade eight. Uh, not all of it in Maine, but we're glad she landed here. Uh, she is um, a valuable resource for the staff at uh, Blue Point School, um, as well as the ed techs within her room in developing positive individualized plans for her students. Um, there have been remarkable results, and she's a wonderful asset to us, so glad you're continuing with us as well. Thank you. Uh, we have some other staff that were unable to be here tonight. Jamie Deshays is a resource room teacher at Wentworth. She received her master's in education from New England College. Prior to working with us as a special education resource room teacher, she was a special education ed tech at the Wentworth School, and she worked for many years in our extended school year program um, as a teacher. Um, she, um, since becoming a teacher, um, she has received specialized training in several of the Linda Mood Bell programs, and she delivers um, this highly specialized programming in reading with fabulous results for our kids. So she's a wonderful asset for us. Lois Grocky is a psychologist for the district. She received her doctorate degree in psychology from the Wright State University in Ohio. Dr. Grocky has over 20 years of experience in day treatment and residential settings, working with children, adolescents, and their families. Prior to coming to Scarborough, she worked in uh, Maine at RSU 57. Um, Lois is extremely skilled in conducting um, at-risk assessments for our students, as well as her consultation skills with our um, students in the um, social life skills program at the Wentworth Middle School and High School programs. Wonderful asset again for us. Sybil Kipp is a part-time OT um, at the Wentworth School. She received her Master's of Occupational Therapy from the University of Southern Maine. She brings over 10 years experience with her from a day treatment setting and was at SAD6 prior to joining us. She brings with her tremendous experience um, in sensory modulation strategies for students with disabilities, especially in the areas of ADHD and the autism spectrum disorder. So we tap her for that as well as for the regular ed interventions. 
Uh, Lindsay Mannion is a speech pathologist who is currently working at our Eight Corners School, but she's also worked at our high school functional life skills program. She received her master's degree in communication disorders from the University of Redlands in California. She joined us with uh, over 11 years of practice and extensive experience with swallowing and feeding protocols for our medically involved students. She is highly skilled in treating the needs of our functional life skills student population. And that wraps it up for special services. Thank you. Thank you. So, Anne and Anne, K2. Yeah. Just one Anne. Only one Anne, please. Okay. Hi. I am happy to introduce my two um, continuing contract teachers, Miss Andrea Wood affectionately known as Annie. I wouldn't know her real name was Andrea, except I heard her say that one day and was like, what, who? <laughs> <laughs> Annie's student taught at Blue Point and we were lucky enough to snag her right away. She um, graduated in 2007 from Wheaton with a degree in, I'm gonna try to get this right, psychology with a concentration in early childhood education and development and a minor in education, elementary education. So <laughs> then she went off and did fabulous things and then she came back to do a teacher certification program through the University of New England <coughs> and she's been with us ever since and we've been very fortunate. She um, has an incredible commitment and connection with her students. Uh, last year, one little girl said, she smiles at me every day. And this is a little girl who doesn't get smiled at at home. So that meant so much. It brings tears to my eyes just to think about it. She felt very special. And all of her students feel very special every day in her room. So thank you, Annie. Mm -hmm. uh, my second teacher is Mrs. Cassandra Salvi, Cassie. Cassie came to us also um, from the University of New England, is an Ed Studies major and st student taught in Cumberland and uh, was teaching there when we were fortunate enough to um, need a teacher in the middle of September. And um, fortunately, Cassie stepped in and took over right away and did a wonderful job. And she was uh, teamed with a, a veteran teacher who had been pairing, sharing a teaching position, uh, partnering with another teacher for several years. And she didn't miss a blink. She just said, OK, I'll do math all day. That's OK. And she's been our math, second grade math specialist ever since and has recently gotten her master's degree in uh, literacy <laughs> from the University of New England, just to give herself some, some breadth. So we're very happy to have both of them. And they both bring incredible energy and positivity to the school. Middle school. I have three teachers. They were not able to make it this evening. We're fortunate to have Maya Lena as an art teacher at the middle school. She comes to us from the private sector and from some private schools out of state. She is an artist in her own right and specializes in pottery. Maya has worked hard to develop a strong art program that includes student choice in showing evidence of meeting art standards. And she's a new mom. Kathy Mills teaches eighth grade Spanish. She comes to us from um, a high school background and is a native speaker. Kathy has brought with her an amazing knowledge of teaching uh, of a world language to students. She makes very strong connections with her students while helping them to make personal learning goals that align with the uh, standards. She also works with the State Department and is a mentor to other Spanish teachers. Um, my third person is Nathan Wentworth. Nathan is a seventh grade math teacher. He comes to us from Massachusetts. He brings a passion for the teaching of mathematics. He is so passionate. He believes that every student who, who leaves his class should actually enjoy math. And he works wonders with those students that consider themselves math phobic and with their parents as well. Um, Nathan effectively uses technology to enhance his teaching. He received a grant his first year, I think, here from the Scarborough, Scarborough Education Foundation. He um, got an e-beam, brought it to the middle school. He has worked wonders with this new technology. Teachers are borrowing it. We are going to look at using this much cheaper um, smart board type of uh, technology uh, as we, when we do our tech refresh. So it was, it's been wonderful for the middle school. So thank you.
It is my honor and privilege to recognize two teachers tonight from the high school. Um, we'll start first with Ms. Karen Silverman, who is, if you would stand, Karen, thank you. Karen is our high school librarian. Um, uh, Karen has spent a tremendous amount of time working with district and out of district resources to develop uh, and change the old fashioned library model to a learning commons model. And as many of you know, uh, we're all, we all grew up in a, a specific type of library where everybody comes in and it's quiet and you don't talk and, and it's a different world now. Uh, Karen has done a wonderful job of embracing that model of creating for our students opportunities for them to come in and have the resources they need to be successful in a, in a different age. Uh, she's very supportive of aligning this model to whatever the students' needs are. I've had the opportunity to observe her in many different settings. I've seen her in the classroom where she supports um, research paper development for English teachers and she explains to the students all the wonderful resources that are out there and the resources that are probably the best for them to choose. In addition to that, she'll meet with whatever teacher that wants her to come in and share with students exactly what the Library Commons is and the types of resources that are available. So we're pr very proud of the work that she's done. We greatly appreciate the fact that she's collaborative and is continuing to develop this Learning Commons model. And it is uh, with great pleasure that we recommend her moving forward to continuing contract for next year. <laughs> the next teacher I'd like to recognize is from our art department. It's Ms. Elise Pelletier. Elise teaches uh, advanced studio art, art foundations, painting, photography one. Um, we're not supposed to have favorite teachers as principals, but I do. <laughs> and the reason for that is if you've gone into Elise's class, it is one of the best environments I have ever been in, in terms of student learning. Elise has taken um, anything that, that they have had for a curriculum and she's developed it so that all of the students are able to tap into their personal interests. The classroom environment, there's music playing, students who are working collaboratively or they're working independently. Elise circulates the classroom providing support. I think the first year I observed or one of the comments I made was, if we could do what you're doing in math classes and science classes and social studies classes, it would be remarkable. Because as you all know, when students are in a very supportive learning environment where they're comfortable, they're tapping into those things that are really important to them, they thrive. Elise has captured this, does an absolutely fantastic job, and she's risen to the challenge I've given her to lead her department in terms of integrating technology. She was one of the stars of Jen Lim's video that, that demonstrated what we were doing with one-to-one -one technology at the high school. Uh, we're very proud of her, and um, we're looking forward to working with her for many more years. Her recommendation is for Elise to a continuing contract teacher. We have a motion. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Seven. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining our school system. At this point, we'll take a small break, five minutes or so, so that if there's any of you who would wish to leave, you may do so at this time. Why would you?
This looks more like the room we usually look at. <laughs> <laughs> this side of the bench. Uh, okay. So, uh, do we have a motion regarding 10.2, the meeting minutes of April 28th? Move approval as printed. Second. Any changes, corrections, additions? Very good. All in favor? Seven. 10.3, the first reading of policy JB transgender students policy. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Second. Very good. Any discussion? Kate, do you want to start? Sure, I'll just say a few words um, as a member of the policy committee. And, and I'm really glad to be able to talk about this particular policy. I think, as you all know, that this is something that's been in the news quite a lot lately in terms of um, how we, as a, as a culture and a society, uh, treat transgendered people. Um, we uh, received a letter in May, a joint letter from the U.S. Department of Education and the Department of Justice, and it was what they called significant guidance on the issue of, of uh, transgender students. And what uh, we were told was, was that students who do not have guidelines in place regarding transgender students could be found to be in breach of Title IX. So, so the stakes are very high here. Um, the, the guidelines that were presented by the Department of Justice and and uh, the Department of Education are also the guidelines recommended by MSMA and are also the guidelines <coughs> recommended by um, our law firm. I think that um, I'm very proud that we took those guidelines and went one step further and turned them into a policy. I think it's absolutely the right thing to do. I think it's something that we can do to really ensure that all students at Scarborough are not only treated fairly, um, but also have a learning environment that's conducive both to their educational and their social needs. And I'm really proud to be bringing this forward tonight. Yes. I will just say that two years ago, we had a video conference with Drummond and Woodsum um, when the court case happened, I think it was in Orono or Old Town, mm -hmm. yeah. and we, a lot of us were crowded around um, the conference room, and they were talking about guidelines that should be in place, and since then, Scarborough has had those guidelines in place, so it's not like before the policies enacted, you know, there was limbo or ambiguity. The, the guidelines from Drummond and Woodsum were already fully enacted in Scarborough, but it's just nice to have it codified with the with the policy, so I'm glad that it's, it's up. Jackie? I just think that we need to treat all folks in a fair manner. And I can imagine, I can't imagine, quite frankly, how difficult this must be for the individual and for that individual's family. Uh, I can't imagine what it might be like to, f to feel like you're not in the right body. Mm -hmm. It's it, it just incomprehensible. I can't imagine it. So to voice that on a child who can't comprehend what's happening when they're two and three years old, and I understand it manifests itself sometimes with with children that young, I just think it's important that everybody know in this community and in this school community and in this state that we stand to support all of our children. I think that is absolutely the first thing we have to do every time. Thank you. Anyone else have anything you'd like to say? I would, just, I would just follow up on, I think, Kelly's comment <clears throat> that, in fact, um, those uh, guidelines um, have served us very well. Uh, and, in fact, while it was in response to something else happening in the state, um, those guidelines, um, and they've not really changed for mm -hmm. the two-year period, and they are very consistent, as uh, Kate said, with the, um, with the federal and the DOE policy. Um, it, we, have, we have maintained compliance and focus, and it's given us um, very close guidance. Um, and we've used that guidance over these last two years. So, Anyone else? I just have a, have, have we, as a school district, had to accommodate on, on bathroom issues? I know, I know we can do it at Wentworth at the new building because 
I know there are bathrooms there that, for example, in the cafeteria, anybody could use. I just wonder if we've had that. We've not had to. We've not had to do. It that. has not risen. Thank you. I think that's important for people to understand. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any comments? Just one. This is the first reading, so yeah, we first will have reading. this mm -hmm. will come again. So. Yes. And and so I too have a, have a, just a few things. Um, you know, I think what this policy would do is is give direction and guidance specifically from the board to our administrators, to our teachers, what we expect of them, you know, if and when they will be com confronted with a, a, a student who is transgender, a transitioning student, uh, family members who come forward to ask the school, what's your policy? Um, and, you know, we're just one conversation away of having that conversation and being asked what is your policy and without one in place we would be backtracking and trying to do what's right um, I just feel that it's really supportive to our teachers and our administrators to to be able to put this into place um, we we teach our students civil rights to me this is a civil right you have a right to be who you are that's a right, and you have a right not to be discriminated against for who you are. So for me, um, you know, schools have had civil rights teams for kind of 30 years now. Um, so, you know, I think it, it really is a, a acknowledging and accepting all of our students, protecting and providing safety for all of our students when we take a look at enacting a policy like this. So. Anything else? Very good. All in favor of the first reading, seven. Thank you. 10.4, the approval of a technology plan. This is a, a bit of a formality, but uh, Monique has uh, stayed and is prepared to um, just give you an update. Uh, talk about um, and I and this board any anyone who's been on the board has been uh, probably exposed to this requirement it's a state requirement um, and the plan has been uh, completed and is ready to go and Monique is here to uh, to basically um, ensure that the board understands that and um, and gets the blessing from the board to um, submit it as we need to submit it Yes, it's a, it takes place every three years. It comes before the board this year. The format is a little bit different, um, but uh, helpful. And so there are different aspects of the um, plan this year. Shared vision for learning is one section, um, which is consistent with our student-centered uh, vision for learning. Our technology plans over the years have always focused on uh, technology at the point of learning for learning. Uh, there's also a shared leadership component within this, which is a, just a description about how well we communicate. I think the successful one-to-one -one initiative at the high school is a wonderful example of that. Uh, there's another section around data and action planning around that data. Um, our students uh, and staff took um, a survey, and so we work with those that data. We've worked with that data, and it's summarized within the plan. Um, and our actions are focused around continuous improvement um, across all aspects of technology planning. And then finally, there's a responsible use section. Uh, and as I've noted within the plan, uh, our K-8 schools are common sense media certified, which means that we deliver uh, an appropriate amount of digital citizenship lessons in education. Uh, but certainly we go beyond that. Uh, and we are, I do have plans for the high school to become uh, common sense media certified as well. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think the new format is shorter. Yes, it last, is a little shorter and it's, it yes, it is rather um, cumbersome um, and quite frankly, not very helpful for actual planning. I, I like this format better. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you. Very good, thank you. So you um, you need an approval a motion, yes. of this. Okay. Yep. Move approval as presented. Second. Second. Very good. All in favor? Seven. Thank you. 10.5, a donation to the middle school. This is actually, uh, and you see the, um, the memo in your packet, this is actually 
um, multiple uh, donations that add up to a total of three thousand eight hundred and nine dollars. Um, the first is from Hannaford Help Schools um, in the amount of twenty two sixty five. Um, and this will be used for um, uh, purchasing of information flat screen purchase uh, for the middle school, um, supporting Wellness Day activities and guest speakers um, throughout the year. Hannaford Helps Schools as well is a, um, a, a second amount. It is um, it, uh, a $1,000 grant given to the middle school and the plans have not yet been made, but it's generally uh, for community building um, and uh, specific topics related to uh, the, the middle school and supporting uh, those initiatives uh, through outside, um, generally through outside uh, folks coming in. The third is from Saco and Biddeford Savings, um, and this is to purchase a xylophone for the band in the amount of um, $544.95. And um, my recommendation would be that the board graciously accept these, rec these uh, donations from Hannaford and from Saco and Biddeford Savings um, with uh, great appreciation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I would just like to say thank you to all of the organizations, not just these, but certainly mm -hmm. others that step forward to help out the schools, whether it be the middle school, the high school, the K-2, or Wentworth. So we greatly appreciate any extra things that happen outside of our normal mm -hmm. budget. So really, right. these things can't happen without the help of the community, too. So. Anyone else? Very good. All in favor? Seven. Thank you. <clears throat> 10.6, six, superintendent authorization of summer hires. Again, this is a, an annual authorization that the board extends to the superintendent. This time it will be for Julie. Um, and uh, it's, it means the end of the school year is coming and the budget <laughs> vote is probably coming right around the corner. Um, we, of course, are um, have done advertising in anticipation of moving forward with the budget, uh, recognizing that that could always be different, but um, we're hopeful uh, that that will happen. Um, it's critically important um, to get out there and find the absolute best folks, um, these folks that have been presented to you um, through these three years that we have them in probation, uh, now the third years uh, moving on to continuing contract have been extraordinary appointments. The quality is, is is unbelievable and and uh, you know my own experience with um, all of the probationary first year probationary teachers across all of the schools this year has just um, been very very impressive spending time with very talented very energized um, teachers and not all new to teaching we run the full spectrum and we and and we want to make sure that we bring in the highest quality uh, individuals into the organization. It is the best way to continue to improve and really um, escalate the quality of what's happening in every classroom in the school. So I would um, recommend that the board move forward and authorize your new superintendent uh, to basically, this is um, uh, uh, doing the summer hires, which means processing through to contracts because typically the contracts would come after the board approves the the nominations. This basically allows the superintendent to move forward, extend a contract because we can't really do a hire and someone's not going to leave where they are now without a contract in place. And so it's just, it's just giving the ability to really move forward. These um, hires will all come before the board um, at, at your first uh, school board meeting, first regular school board meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Seven, thank you. And 11.0. Donna? Yes. May I just make an announcement? Sure. If tomorrow morning, the second graders from the three elementary schools are going to go up to Wentworth, kind of a step up day. And sometime uh, around 10, between 10 and 11, they're going to be planting sunflowers in the garden. So that when they come back in the fall as third graders, the sunflowers are going to be blooming. <laughs> I great. love it. What an opportunity. If you would like to come over and help, Kiwanis is assisting, and I think maybe some people from the Garden Club. 
but that's going to be cute. they're going to be all second graders. Another so place for Mr. Kelly. To and I hear grade, there are some very cute second graders. There are some cute <laughs> second graders. <laughs> Extraordinary. So, uh, it's it'll be cute. fun, I think, and uh, you're all welcome to come. I saw you extended the invitation to Mr. Kelly sitting in our first row as well. <laughs> He's nodding his head, yes. He Love. is running around like yes. crazy. Keeping yes. him busy this week. <laughs> Very good. So do we have a motion to go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA, subsection 405-6D, regarding the maintenance contract not to return to public session? So move, and it'll be very brief. Second. Second. All in favor? Seven. Thank you. We are adjourned.